There's that long-standing meme that FIA stands for Ferrari International Assistance because Ferrari always seems to get a little bit more help compared to other teams. There's these little bit of assistances, little bit of a financial thing, or just you know cases of turning a blind eye that the other teams wouldn't necessarily get. And while we think it's a bit of a meme, are there actually any blatant cases of Ferrari getting a little bit of a helping hand? And there is one that stands out the 1960 Italian Grand Prix. Now moving into the 1960s, Formula One was in a transitional period. Front engines were dying. It was the last time the Indy 500 was part of the calendar, and this was also the last year of the two and a half litre engine formula. And there were a couple of smaller engines on the grid, such as the 1.5 litre flat four used in the Camaradi Porsches, and also the 2.4 litre V6 coming out of Maranello. And the vast majority of the engines being used at this time were either inline fours or inline sixes. Ferrari was the only constructor using a V configuration. And Ferrari had got this V6 in its 246 model, which first debuted in 1958. The engine itself was a Dino with a power output of around 275 horsepower, which is a tiddly amount compared to what we know today, but at the time it must have been an absolute animal to drive on those skinny tyres. And while it was the first V6 in a Formula 1 car, that engine was fitted, as per Ferrari tradition, in the front. And in that 1958 season, Mike Hawthorne won the title. But around the late 1950s, the constructors started to fiddle with putting the engines in the rear, starting with the Cooper T43 back in 1957. And this allowed for cars to have better traction, better centre of gravity, a narrower front end for aero, and other things like that. But Enzo and Ferrari stubbornly stuck to putting the engine in the front because, well, Ferrari and, you know, engine power always wins, right? And while Ferrari had indeed won in 1958, Jack Brabham in his rear engine Cooper won the championship in 1959 while Ferrari was in second. The rear engine revolution had truly got underway and by 1960, if you wanted to win, you had got to have a rear engine car but the Italians still whacked them in the front, although there were some of the privateer teams also using front engine designs, the Lotus 16 being one of them, although the 18 was rear engine, and the 16 was developed for use in Formula 2 as well as Formula 1. And in the 1960 season, Ferrari was getting hammered. The car was now two and a half seasons old and, well, obsolete. The rear engines had now really taken over and following that season's Indy 500, Jack Brabham won five races in a row, taking the top spot at Zandvoort, Spa, Reims or Rem or Rom, I don't know how it's pronounced, and also Silverstone and the Portuguese Grand Prix at Boa Vista. And by this point, Jack Brabham had already won the World Championship, so it just left the rest of the season for everybody to fight over what scraps remained. Ferrari had gone without a victory all season. That's not good. They had, however, in the background been developing another car for the 1961 season, the 246P, which was a mid-engine version of that 1960 car, well, 1958 car. It was used a couple of times during the season, but it scored no wins, no poles, no fastest laps, and, well, no points, really. So noticing how things were going, the Italian racing authorities decided to have a play with how they were going to put on this race. Jack Brabham had already won the world title, so there was nothing left to fight for. So why not try and manipulate the event to exploit the one thing that Ferrari had over everybody else? Straight line speed. They changed the circuit layout from the boot-shaped circuit we know and love, minus the chicanes, and also added on the absolutely mental oval as well. Now there was already the Indy 500, which has a banking of 9 degrees, but the Monza banking was 21 degrees. You might have seen this being exaggerated by racing drivers every year for the Italian Grand Prix as they use it to get some cheap Instagram shots. So in total, this track was 10 kilometers in length, and cars would pass the start line twice on every lap. They would start the race in the spot they start the race now, on that front straight, and then blast off towards Curva Grande with no chicanes to slow them down. They might dab the brakes slightly to get through what is a flat out corner today, but the first of only two real braking points would be as they reach the first of the two Lesmo corners. Brake, down a couple of gears, turn right, turn right again, and then begins the return to the finish line. Ascari is a left hand kink at this point, and again a dab of brakes, but that's about it, and then up towards Parabolica, the second braking point. 
This is taken as it is today, but on the exit, the track hangs right slightly and you pass by the pit garages and there's straw bales separating the two lanes of traffic. Then it's right foot to the floor and round the oval, taking the 21 degrees of banking at speeds in excess of 160 miles an hour and not letting up at all. Super long gear ratio is required and the oval was bumpy as hell, probably on par with somewhere like Sebring Sunset Corner today. And then the oval ends, spitting you out onto the start finish straight and you do another lap. 10 kilometers, with over 90% of the lap at full chat. I was still about five or six years away from Jackie Stewart's safety crusade at this point, but this wasn't a sport for the weak hearted to start with. The British teams, when they saw what they were gonna be racing on, boycotted the event altogether. And we've seen races boycotted before. The 1982 San Marino Grand Prix stands out as part of the Feast of Folk War, which is something I need to look at in a little bit more detail again at some point. And there's also the boycott due to apartheid in South Africa, which was back in 1985 or something like that. But the reason the British teams boycotted the race is that they were claiming that the Monza Oval was no longer suitable for Formula One cars. The last time they raced on the Oval was 1958. Only seven cars finished, and while three cars retired in that race due to accidents, the others retired due to something going wrong on the car. Engine, clutch, gearbox, transmission, and suspensions all breaking as the cars ran full throttle and over the bumps too often for those parts to handle. So with all the British teams not racing, the organizers had to fill the grid with Formula 2 entries to prevent it looking like Indianapolis 2005. Ferrari filled the grid with as many cars as it possibly could, and only 16 drivers made the event, with Ferrari, Castellotti, Maserati and Porsche being the only entrants on the grid. And there were, it has to be said, customer Cooper entries there, but none of the main teams, so Lotus, Cooper, Van Wall, they just weren't there. Richie Ginther led away from the start, but Phil Hill eventually overtook him. From there, it was pretty much a procession. Ferrari won the race with a 1-2-3 with Hill, Ginther and Willy Mayres filling the podium, and Ferrari ending up with four drivers in the top five as Wolfgang von Trips finished fifth, with Giulio Cabianca finishing in between him and Mayres. My Mayres. We'll stick to it. Von Trips, however, was in a Formula 2 car. It was the first win for an American driver on a road course since the inception of the World Championship in 1950, and would also be the last win for a front-engine Formula 1 car in a World Championship race. In 1961, a non-championship race was won by a front-engine car. Ferrari would eventually swallow its pride for 1961 though. Even though Enzo didn't like rear or mid-engine cars, the 156 Sharp Nose entered the sport the following year and dominated, culminating in a championship win for Phil Hill although this was at the expense of the death of Wolfgang von Trips, who was killed at the 1961 Italian Grand Prix after an accident with Jim Clark. And the raging over Italians and where they should put the engines in their cars doesn't end there, as there was the famous blue Ferrari moment in the 1964 Formula 1 season, when there was a bit of a fight between Enzo and the Italian racing authorities over whether or not their Le Mans car should be front, mid or rear engine. But that's something for another day. So then, a look at the time the Brits boycotted the banking. If this has been something new that you've learned here today, then do give the video and thumb up. And if you want more stuff like this from the Motorsport History Books, do get subscribed if you haven't already, and also get the bell on so you never miss out on anything that I do here. Massive thanks as ever to the kind folk at Patreon, and if you want to help support me as I try to buy up more images to use in these videos, then you can help support all of that by following the link down in the description, where there'll also be links to Discord and also to my socials. So until next time, I've been Aidan Maud, have a cracking day wherever you live in the world, and I'll see you all again soon. Goodbye.